Hello, Dorpa Time. I'm uh, responding to the argument for quantum mechanics for the non existence of the Christian God. And uh, I noticed one of your premises is wrong here. And uh, I don't blame you for getting this wrong because there's no way on earth you could possibly have known this. But uh, I'm going to attack premise two of your argument. The Christian God cannot prevent quantum tunneling as an immaterial mind lacks the means to instantiate violations of the Schrodinger equation and evanescent wave coupling. All right. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm not just going to say mind of God, but I'm going to say minds in general have the capacity to do this. And the reason we know this is because if minds could not control quantum tunneling deterministically, we would all be on the floor having seizures right now. Um, now, what's going on here? This is a, I gave a, a lecture on this actually once in a biophysics class. Uh, when the when your nerve signals that control your bodily movements uh, when they when they fire. What happens is there's a, a dendrite and there's a synapse in the middle and then it goes to another dendrite and there's has to be an impulse crossing the, the synapse barrier, right? Or the, the gap in between. So anyway, as it turns out, the wall of the dendrite is too thick to allow for classical action. All right. So now what happens is the only possible remaining s a solution for anything to travel across the barrier is quantum tunneling to occur. Now what's very weird about this is when we you know set up the the physical model, or uh, define the define the uh, potential barrier at the the neuron with the uh, synapse wall. It turns out that the wave function has to stack up just precisely right in front of the barrier for a quantum tunneling event to occur, and it triggers off a hydrogen atom, which then penetrates the barrier, tunnels through the barrier, and passes through the or tunnels through the potential barrier, then travels to the synapse in the middle and hits the next end right, and then carries the trigger along. So what's weird about this is that it's on-command quantum tunneling, and the funny thing is, is that, you know, when you move your hands, it happens every single time. It's it's an on-command yes/no thing, which is very bizarre because quantum tunneling normally happens to turn out probabilistically. Now this doesn't violate the Schrodinger equation at all because the probability amplitude is the same, but before the quantum tunneling occurs the probability amplitude adds up in such a way that it resembles a, a sort of Dirac spike, so the, the wave function has been collapsed somehow, and that decoheres again, and then the, the hydrogen atom just passes through the barrier and crosses over the gap. So I have some ideas on how this works. Uh, the wave function is non-physical, really. It's a, it's a quantum prob uh, pure mathematical probability, and so the mind being a priori could affect other sort of a priori quasi-numinal constructs like the wave function, and then, you know, in such a way, it, it, they're made of the same substance, so they can, one can interact with the other one directly, and then the physicalness of the physical world is sort of contained internally within the wave function, and so those things can't control the wave function. But, uh, yeah, you're wrong there. It, quantum tunneling can be automatically triggered by consciousness in a way that is deterministic, which is, it sounds rather bizarre, because quantum tunneling and all the quantum mechanical processes under normal conditions are completely probabilistic, but in this case, it's not that way at all.